All right, guys, let's make an egg apron. <laughs> it has recently come to my attention how many people that I know that own chickens. <laughs> I know a lot of people that own chickens. And so I went on Pinterest trying to find something that I could crochet for these friends of mine. And I found the egg apron, but I wanted my egg apron to look different, function different. So I created my own pattern and the differences would include the pocket being on the inside or the other side. And it's more diagonal. So that way, if I need to quickly grab something, it has more of the curvature angle of my pocket. The tops of each egg pouch has a closure or a seal. That way, if I were to bend down, the egg wouldn't fall out of the pockets or the pouches. And then the back with the belt, I added a clasp so that I could have a nice, quick, firm hold of the apron and I didn't have to fuss with tying any knots. So all those things were important for me and that's why I added them to this egg apron. I've already shown this to a lot of my friends who have chickens and I'm going to be gifting this to them and they're super excited. If you have chickens or you know of anybody who has chickens, you've got to make this. They're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's going to be awesome and you're just going to love the fact that you made it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna label the level for this project to be uh, an advanced beginner level crochet project because all the pieces are really simple to make. It's mostly just sewing them, attaching them together, and that's going to be the big part. There's a lot of pieces that you're making and then just joining them all together. The pattern you can find in both the comment section and description section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. As always, you don't need the pattern in order to make this project. However, there are some pieces here that you're gonna to need to make a lot of, and it might be helpful for you to have the pattern there, make all the pieces you need to make, and then come back to the video to see what I do next. Just saying that might be helpful, but of course you don't have to have the pattern in order to make this. All right, when you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make this egg apron. The materials that you are going to need to make your egg apron will include a size four weight, 100% cotton yarn. I have here Lily Sugar and Cream, the super size version. I used approximately 594 yards of yarn, 544 meters, 354 grams, or 12.5 ounces of yarn to complete this egg apron. Now I'm telling you the approximate amount of yarn that I used because I used four skeins of this Lily Sugar and Cream super size version, but I had a significant amount of yarn left over in that fourth skein. So I figured if I just told you approximately how much yarn I used, you could get away with a normal Lily Sugar and Cream skein of yarn and not have to go super size, but you feel free to work up with whatever you'd like to work with. The crochet hook I used was a J10 or six millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in all of those mini ends that we will have at the end of the project, a pair of scissors. You're going to want a lot of stitch markers to help us when it comes to the joining portion of this whole project. You're going to need a lot of joins, so make sure you have a ton of stitch markers on hand. The tape measure is going to help you to make sure that each piece is approximately the same size to keep you on track there. And then last, this is optional, but it's a little clasp that you can have for the belt portion of this whole egg apron. It's a really nice finishing touch, very clean, brings the whole project up a little bit on the whole professional scale. <laughs> and it just helps to make that belt a nice, more snug, tighter fit. So. That's just a nice little piece to have on hand. I'm gonna have a link to everything you see here in both the description section and comment section below this video. So if you're having trouble getting your hands on anything, all you have to do is click on the link, purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Otherwise, go ahead and use whatever you have on hand and let's go ahead and dive right into how to make the egg apron. All right, so we are going to begin by making the main body of the egg apron. This is the largest section. It'll take you the most amount of time, but it's important to just make the base of this whole egg apron. Starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in the ends at the end of our project, create a slip knot, 
attach our crochet hook, we are ready to begin. We will start by chaining 80 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 79 and 80. Perfect. All right. So for row one of our egg apron, we are going to half double crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So not including the loop on our hook, finding our V stitches, one, two, make a half double crochet stitch in that second chain and then make one half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. You should end row one with a total of 79 half double crochet stitches. Here we go. Seventy-eight and seventy-nine. Last stitch here. Perfect. Great. All right, to move on to row two, we will chain one, turn our work, and for row two, through the end of row 40, all we're doing is making one half double crochet stitch in every stitch across. That's all we are doing. We are making a very blank backdrop for those pockets to lay on top of. So again, to get onto every row, we will chain one, turn, and then just continue making one half double crochet in each stitch across. Go ahead and work all the way through the end of row 40. I'll meet you at the end of row 40 to show you what we do next. Let's move on to the belt portion of our egg apron. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this and move it to the side. All right, so grabbing our yarn, To make the belt portion of our egg apron, we're gonna go ahead and start with a long enough tail, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, begin by chaining 141 chains. Now, I'm going to show you how I made my belt, but if my belt does not, it's too small for you, you can absolutely go ahead and make your belt longer. How you would adjust that is by how many chains you start with right here. So if you'd like to take your measuring tape and then measure around yourself, and then probably add a foot to that measurement just so you have a little extra slack to tie off around your waist, go ahead and do that. But there is no stitch count requirement here at all. Just go ahead and chain to your best fit. I'm going to chain 141 chains. 40, 41, perfect. All right, so for row one of our belt, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So not including the loop on our hook, look at those V stitches, one, two, single crochet in that second chain, and then make one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. So go ahead and take a second, do that. I will meet you at the very end to show you what we do differently, what we do next. All right, as we get to the end here of row one, in the very last chain space here, we are going to make four single crochet stitches and work our way to the other side of the work. So, one, two, three, move that tail out of the way. And four, perfect. We are going to keep the tail outside of the work. We're not going to crochet over it. That way we can have a much more secure hold when we weave it in at the end. All right, so now that we have transitioned around making our way to the other side of the work, go ahead and continue making one single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way down. Okay, coming up to the end of the other side of row one, finding the very last stitch space, you'll see that there is already a single crochet stitch in this stitch space from the other side of the work. So all we have to do is add three single crochets into this very last stitch space. One, two, 
three and then slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch to close this round. This is now considered a round, round one. Look how smoothly it transitioned around the end. Looks great. Okay, let's go ahead and shift everything around. We are now ready to move on to round two. Round two is the last round for the belt. Start by chaining one. To begin round two, we will make two single crochet stitches in the first stitch space, which just so happens to be the same stitch we just slip stitched into. One, two, and then we are going to make one single crochet in each stitch all the way across the belt, making our way to the corner four single crochet stitches here. Pause here, I will meet you here to show you how we get around this corner and move on to the other side of the work. All right, coming upon the corner four single crochet stitches. Let's find those really quick. Oh, I just came, came to it. One, two, three, four, perfect. So in each one of these four stitch spaces, I'm going to make two single crochet stitches to help me get around this corner. So one, two, three, four, turning, turning. five, six, and seven, eight. Perfect, all right, so rotating everything. We will continue to make one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across our belt. I will meet up with you in the last three stitches here this, of this next corner so we can close this corner and finish off our belt. Here we go, and then this corner spot, I have one, two, three, perfect. And then this was the slip stitch to close round one, so we don't include that one in our count. So if you need help guiding you so you don't accidentally add an extra stitch or two, look at that last stitch space, find the three stitches that were in it, and you just wanna add two single crochet stitches on top of those three single crochets. One, two, and then three, and then slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch to close round two, just like that, perfect. And then check that out. Very smooth transition there. Go ahead and grab your scissors. Let's cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our end. Perfect. Slip stitch to close, and that's a tie off. There we go. All right, so our belt is done. Let's go ahead and set that off to the side. And let's start working on the next part, which will be the pocket. All right, when it comes to the pocket, let's go ahead and start with our slip knot, touching our crochet hook, here we go. We will start by chaining 21 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, 20, 21. Perfect. All right, for row one, we will half double crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. And to make one half double crochet in each chain all the way across, you should end row one with a total of 20 half double crochet stitches. Nineteen and twenty. Great. All right, to move on to row two, we will chain one. We will turn our work. Now for row two through the end of row sixteen, all we are doing is making one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. You will end each row by chaining one to get to the next row. All right, go ahead and continue on. I will meet you at the end of row 16 to show you what we do next. 
All right, coming upon the end of row 16. Perfect. All right, so for row 17, we will chain one, turn our work. The first two stitches we will make of row 17 will be a half double crochet two tog. So go ahead and yarn over, insert your crochet hook, first stitch, yarn over, pull through. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through two, leave two loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, insert crochet hook into the second stitch space, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops on my crochet hook for that half double crochet two tog. Perfect. All right, and then continue making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of row 17 to show you what we do next. All right, end of row 17 here. Ah, boom. All right, to move on to row 18, chain one turn our work. We're going to make one half double crochet stitch in every stitch pausing at the last two stitches. So go ahead and work your way all the way down leaving the last two stitches of row 18 unworked. One half double crochet. And last half double crochet stitch. Okay, two spaces left, stitches left. We're going to end row 18 with a half double crochet two tog. There we go. All right, we have just finished the pocket. Go ahead and grab your scissors. And we're gonna cut a long enough tail for us to attach the pocket to the main body of the egg apron. So feel free to err on too much than not enough here. We really have enough yarn left over to be more than good to leave ourselves some extra slack here. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off, pull tight, perfect. And now we can set this pocket off to the side and move on to the next thing we're gonna make. And that is going to be the egg pouch. So for the egg pouch, we're taking our yarn again, crochet hook, long enough tail, slip knot, crochet hook, perfect. We will start by chaining 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, 13, 14, 15, perfect. For row one, we will half double crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. And we will make one half double crochet in each chain all the way across. You should end row one with a total of 14 half double crochet stitches. And 14. Perfect, Ah, there we go, all right. To move on to row two, we will chain one, turn our work. Row two through the end of row eight, we're just making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. That's all we are doing. Let's go ahead and work through row eight. I'll meet you at the end of row eight to show you what we do next. And finishing off row eight, Perfect, all right, so this is what it should look like right here. Go ahead and grab your scissors. We're gonna cut a long enough tail for us to attach this egg pouch to the main body of the egg apron. And then tie off our work. All right, go ahead and make 14 more of these for a total of 15 egg pouches. Perfect, all right, go ahead and continue doing that and then I'll meet up with you to show you what we do next. Great, we have just finished all of the pieces for our egg apron. Before we can move on to assembling all these pieces together, let's take a second and weave in all of our ends, clean everything up. That way when we are attaching everything together, we don't have to fuss with it. So when I say weave in our ends, I mean 
here is the tail we're going to use to attach this pocket to the actual egg apron. However, this little tiny tail here, we want to weave that in. For the belt, we want to weave in both ends. For the egg apron, we want to weave in the end that we began the project with and ended it with. And then, of course, when it comes to all of these egg pouches, remember, we want to keep the long side I'll leave the long side alone so we can attach the pouch to the egg apron, but find the smaller tail we, we began the pouch with and weave that smaller tail in. Okay, so this is gonna take a little bit of time. Go ahead and weave in all your ends and then come back to the video and we will assemble all of these pieces together. Now that we have cleaned up all of our pieces, let's assemble all of these together and complete our egg apron. I'm actually gonna go ahead and move the egg pouches out of the way and the pocket and focus on the belt and the main body, making that belt loop portion on the egg apron. I choose to do this part first because it really helps set up what free space I have on the main body. All right, so I'm gonna unfold this, move belt right there, find the last row. That is the first row, so I need to flip, flip this. Great, all right, when it comes to making our loop for the belt, I attach the last row with the row that's 10 rows down or row 30. So last row, row 40 to row 30. Two, four, six, eight, 10, right there. Now is when you will want to grab those stitch markers so we can attach these two sections together so they don't shift on us when we are joining them together. So I'll go ahead and join here. Before I get too far, I do want to mention what I do personally when I am making this belt loop is I will take the belt and I will actually insert the belt into the work and then join this belt loop around the belt. Now the one thing that could be tricky about this is you definitely don't want to accidentally sew the belt into place. You want the belt to be able to move inside the belt loop. So it is your choice if you would like to start off by having the belt inside the belt loop and then joining around it, or if you want to create the belt loop and then thread the belt through the loop. This is just a significant loop <laughs> and it could be a little more tricky to wiggle that belt through this really long section, but it can be done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue joining with my stitch markers, row markers. So that way when I am joining, it doesn't shift, it doesn't move. Okay, great. All of my stitch markers are in place. I am now ready to join this down or sew it down together so it is complete, the belt loop is whole. So grabbing our yarn needle, tapestry needle, and our loose yarn. Now I like to grab, that's a scrap, I like to grab a significant amount of yarn It's okay if you have too much, if you have too little, that's okay too. You can just tie off and attach more yarn. Thread, that's perfect. Okay, coming to one side of the work, I'm going to remove this stitch marker. There we go. And I'm going to come and I'm going to line this up. There we go. Come to the edge and I'm going to attach. Leaving a long enough tail for us to sew in, weave in the end when we are done. Great, and then all we are doing here well, for me, I need to make sure that I lift this up, push the belt up, align, 
And these stitch markers will help me to keep everything in line. And then I will go through the next stitch all the way through. And then I'll look at the work and I'll bring the needle back through the, the following stitch. So back and forth all the way down, down this line. Now periodically you are going to want to check to make sure that your line not only didn't shift, but it doesn't bunch either. As you're working, it is very possible for everything to kind of want to wiggle over that way. And so you want to periodically stop, lay everything flat, make sure you shift everything back so it is in line and it looks more relaxed and it doesn't look like, oh, I stretched everything out as I was going, stretched everything out. Up oh, now I have this bunching right here. What am I gonna do? Pause, relax it, lay it flat, pinch, go. All right, you got this. Go ahead and work this all the way down, joining this whole section, and I'll meet you at the other end to show you what we do next. All right, coming upon the end here. One more to secure. Great, now before I tie this off, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna lift up all of my join to make sure I didn't leave a significant gap somewhere because that would just be awful to have a huge gap in the work, it not really be finished. And now is the time I could go back and fix that. Now I feel really good about my join. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. Hold some yarn back. Twist it so I have that X shape. And slip knot to tie off. Perfect. Now I'm not gonna join in right now. I'm gonna save that to the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a long enough tail so that I can weave in my end at the end of the project. Perfect. Now the side of the belt loop that I just joined to, this is gonna be considered the back of the work. <clears throat> the other side, it's more streamlined, more flat. I'm going to leave this to be the front of the work. All right, so when I'm looking at the back of the work, I'm gonna come to one side, I'm going to grab my pocket. Now it doesn't matter which side of the work you attach your pocket. Think about when you are working or doing something, which is your dominant hand? Which is the side that you would usually slip your phone into? For me, it's going to be this side right here because this, that's the hand that I usually use. So I'm going to put my pocket on this side now when it comes to the pocket, one side will be straight up and down and the other side will have that little angle. We did that on purpose. You're gonna align that angle to the side of the work and it will be flush and it looks really clean. I'm gonna bring, drop my pocket down closer to the bottom of the work, but watch out so you don't have it hang past your work. There you go. Now this is how I will place it. This is all personal preference though. I'm not going to say you have to place the pocket between round or row this and row that. You decide if you want it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. This is all personal preference. All right, once you have decided where you like your pocket, go ahead and thread your yarn needle and sew your pocket onto your work. Join it together. Remember to keep the top open, that way you can use it as a pocket. So we are just going to sew this little corner here to the edge. So join this side, this side, and this side, but leave this side open. All right, continue on. I'll meet you after we have are done joining the pocket to show you how we will join the egg pouches.
and finishing up the pocket. Perfect. All right, going to tie it off. Great, and again, I'm not going to weave in my end right here. I'm gonna leave that for the end, cutting a long enough tail. Great. All right, we are now on to the very last step, which is attaching the actual egg pouches to our apron. So flipping our egg apron over, looking at the front of the work, and grabbing all of our mini egg pouches. Just grab five, start with five. One, two, three, four, five and move all the others off to the side. So our egg pouches are going to run three rows and five pouches in each row. Grab all your stitch markers. You're gonna want a lot because we are going to need to secure all of these egg pouches in the row so that way they don't shift on us and they're gonna wanna shift on us. So I'm gonna grab some orange. I may not need all of this, but better be safe than sorry here. Okay, so row one of our egg pouches is going to land on row three of our main body of our apron. So finding row three, so two, three. And I like to place my long tail in the upper corner so that way when I'm attaching or sewing the pouch, I just go down, over, up. All right, so coming over here, finding row three, two, three, and I'm about three stitches in from the side. But this can always be wiggle room as, you, as you're working. So before I actually secure anything, I'm gonna lay these down just in case I need to shift anything over. Next will be, I'm gonna put it right next to each other. So they're right next to each other. There we go, row three on top of row three. Perfect. And it leaves me with about three stitches on this side of the work as well for some symmetry. Great. Now I'm going to work backwards and attach the stitch markers so that way the pieces don't move on me. Now they're still probably going to need to move slightly, but this way we know they're at least staying in line with row three. And we know that they're staying butted up against each other here and not overlapping each other. We do not want overlap. Great, once we have secured all of our pouches with these stitch markers, now let's go ahead and take those long tails and start joining them to the work. Again, we are going to just sew to attach the sides and the bottom. So side, bottom, side, then tie off. Grab the new tail. Side, bottom, side, tie off. New tail. Side, bottom, side, tie off. Keep the tops open, because that's going to be, be the pouch section that we place the egg inside. All right, continue on. I'll meet you here at the end and then show you the next step we are going to, to need to do to move forward. Now that we've made it to the end of this first row, let's go ahead and take all of those tails, clean them up, weave them in from this row, and then we'll set up row two and row three and move on from there. Mm -hmm. 
Now that all of our ends have been woven in, all of those ends are out of our way so we can move on to the next two rows. Go ahead and grab another five. One, two, three, four, five. Move the last five off to the edge. And what we're gonna do for the next two rows, line up five. We're going to align row two along the 13th row. So here we aligned everything up on row three. Row two, we're going to line everything up on row 13. And then the third row, we're going to line everything up on row 23. So if you need help counting which row you're on, just look at the side of the work. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So here's 14. So we're gonna line up one row above where we just stopped and align everything. And then we're gonna grab all of our stitch markers, pin it down, and then sew everything onto the work and then come back for row three. Grab your last five, align them all on row 23, which should just be one row above and right below that belt line here. Pin that down, sew it down, and then you'll have your three rows of egg pockets locked in. The only thing I wanna mention before I let you go is on the other side of the work is the pocket. Make sure when you are sewing your egg pouches onto your apron that you're not accidentally sewing the pocket closed or any part of the pocket sewing that closed. All right, so be very mindful, be very careful of the pocket. All right, I think you are good to go to move on. I will meet you when you have finished sewing on all three rows, woven all of your ends into the project, including these guys right here, and then I will show you the very last step we do to finish off this egg apron. You've got this, you're doing a great job. I hope you're having fun. Perfect, we have just assembled all of the pieces onto the egg apron. What we are going to do next is just the finishing touches to finish off this egg apron. The one thing that I noticed when it came to the pouches is that if I were to put an egg in here and for some reason I had to lean forward to pick something up, it is likely that that egg could fall out of the pouch. And I wanted to prevent that from being a possibility from happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line a border on the top of the egg pouches where I'm going to add like a little lip here. So that way the top of the egg pouch is taut to the main body of the work. And if I put an egg in here, I can still open it to place an egg inside but then when it closes, it has a more secure hold of the egg. Okay, so grabbing my crochet hook and yarn. Now, because we are lining the top of the egg pouch, you can absolutely choose to have a different color of yarn to do this with for a contrast. But for me, I'm just going to use the exact same yarn because I do have a significant amount of yarn left over. Perfect, all right. To attach the yarn to the project, I'm gonna find where the egg pouch was joined onto the main body, and I'm actually going to slip stitch into the main body. I'm not going to start by slip stitching onto the egg pouch. This will create a nice streamlined look for this row. So yarn over, pull through, pull all the way through for a slip stitch. Beautiful. Now what we are going to do, looking at the egg pouch itself, we are going to single crochet into the first six stitch spaces, skip two spaces, and then single crochet in the last six stitch spaces. So let's do that together. One, two, three, four, five, six, skip two, then one, and if you want, you can actually push that forward. Two, three, four, five, six, and pause. You should still be in the same egg pouch 
if you do this where you single crochet six, skip to single crochet six, and then you are already entering into the next egg pouch, then you skipped a stitch somewhere. It was not easy to see or in some way it just got missed, but just know this should be exactly what you have in one egg pouch. All right, and then we move on. Find the next stitch, single crochet in the first six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, skip two, one, two, single crochet in the last six, one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. All right, and like I said, you will be left if you come back and you pinch this in the middle, you'll notice a little lip here and how it makes this really pretty kind of design where this is all tight to the main body and then it has this slack here. Perfect, continue on to the end of this row and then I'll show you how we will close off this top border and then you'll just repeat what we do here for row two and row three. four, five, six. Great, made it to the end. Now how we will close this off is I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch over on the main body of the work. So scooching over that egg pouch, finding a stitch space here and slip stitch. And what that will do is it will add a very clean attachment stopping point here at the end of the work. And if you look back at the beginning of the work, it's a very clean attachment. So you don't have a single crochet abrupt stop right where the egg pouch begins and ends. It's a very nice blend of the work. All right, and that's all we do for the row. Grab our scissors, cut a long enough tail so we can weave in that end right there. Yarn over, tie off the work and then repeat exactly what we just did for row one, for row two and row three, then come back and I'll show you the last thing that I do to finish off the egg apron. Okay, so the very last thing that we have to do to finish this off is the optional addition of the clasp. So honestly, if you don't want the clasp, you just wanna tie this in a knot around your waist, you absolutely can but I really thought that adding the clasp was a nice touch. So when we come to the clasp, I'll start with, so if this is how I would wear it facing me, I'm gonna put this side on this end. So I will come, here we go. I'm gonna want it to face down. So I'm gonna come at it from the bottom. Grab. There we go. Perfect. And then I'm going to come through this way. And grab. And if you need to use your crochet hook to help you grab the loops, you can. There we go. Perfect, so that's what it'll look like there. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to secure this end over. So I don't need that much of a, of a pullover because this part is going to be permanent. So about that much is great. Kind of mold it there so that it's in line. Grab some scrap yarn and your yarn needle. Great. Come in through both sides here. Well, let's start on this side closest. Perfect. And through both leaving a long enough tail for us to weave in the end, 
tie a knot. One, two, perfect. And then go ahead and secure the rest of this. If you're using the same color, it's real nice because then you can attach wherever you want to attach and it's invisible. You don't have to worry about your stitches being pretty. Then I'll do an X shape right above the clasp. Just, that's just something I do. It's not something that you have to do. It's just for that extra strength. Then I'll come and tie off this working thread here, working yarn. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off, leaving a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends so that way I can move on to the next step and you don't have to watch me weave in my ends. <laughs> All right, so this is one side, the clasp. Then coming to the other side of the clasp, coming here, you're going to come in the front, the first one, Work that through. Great. And this is where you're going to adjust to the size that will fit you best. And then you come back through that top one There you go, perfect for a secure clasp. And now your clasp is on. And like I said, this part is completely adjustable so you can have the best, tightest, most secure fit. And then when you come to the back and you put it on, you're ready to go. And that's it guys, that is the egg apron. Here's the front of it with all 15 pouches ready to go. And if you turn it around, you've got your nice little pocket right here that you can put your cell phone, your keys, anything in that's just needs to be held, but you want it out of your way, but it's also not taking up any of the real estate area on the front of the egg apron. Oh, I hope you had fun. All right guys, what did you think of the egg apron? I actually had an opportunity to test it out with my neighbor's chickens. My neighbors have chickens. <laughs> and they let me hold the chicken and go to the chicken coop and place some of the fresh eggs into the egg pouches. And they fit beautifully. I even bent over, tried to see if this whole hold with the egg pouch worked and it did. It was great. In fact, I plan on giving this egg apron to my neighbors after this video is over. And they're really excited to receive it just because the functionality was there and so helpful. If you have chickens or know of anybody who has chickens, you've got to make this egg apron. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already. That way you don't miss my upcoming videos. I make all kinds of different types of crochet videos, projects, content. You're not going to want to miss out. Check out my membership program. I have two different levels that you're going to want to check out. See if there is one that fits you best, give you a little bit more out of my channel, a little bit more involvement. I would love to have you join. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you're going to want to check out these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.